a pleasure to introduce our second speaker, Paola Antonelli, who, who will be in turn introducing um, our Arts Prize winners in the field of design. Um, Paola has had a, a long association with uh, our foundation. She was a juror for the selection of the Architecture Prize winner back in 2007, which was our second round of, 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 of uh, prizes. And uh, this year, of course, she was uh, a member of the jury who selected our design prize winner. So uh, we, we are very indebted to her for the many contributions that she has made to us. Um, Paola has had a, an extraordinarily successful career. She completed a degree in architecture in her native Italy. Actually, she was born in Sardinia. I'm not sure whether that's really, it is part of Italy, but, but, but it's, it's somewhat, somewhat separate. Um, but she, she is Italian. Um, and however, despite the fact that uh, she uh, completed a degree in architecture, she never worked as an architect. Instead, she became a respected scholar and curator in the field of architecture and design, and uh, she curated numerous exhibitions, uh, initially in Italy, in France, and in Japan, uh, in architecture and, and design. And then in 1994, she joined the Museum of Modern Art, where she is currently senior curator for architecture and design. I should mention that, and I was very impressed to read that, that Paola was recently included on the list of 100 most powerful people in the world of art. Uh, so congratulations on, on, on that. <laughs> so, <laughs> so uh, I'm very grateful, Paola, for your willingness to introduce uh, our prize winners in the field of design. And I have to tell everybody I was number 98, <laughs> which is really important to say. Um, in, in the trajectory that many of us have had coming into the United States, something that may, used to make me laugh like there's no tomorrow was the term alien of extraordinary ability. Because I felt like it was part of Star Trek, if not Battlestar Galactica, if I was a Cylon. But in truth, uh, many of you have not had that experience. That's kind of the spoiled brat experience, typical of an Italian. You know, Italians are waved in pretty much everywhere. We're completely non-threatening and usually well-dressed. And uh, many times we do not require visas. But many of you here instead have had it hard. For many of you, borders were cruel, bloody, cutting edges that meant really the difference between life and death. And the life story of so many of you is really humbling and amazing. And, uh, you know, Jan and Maritza stand really as a paragon of the courage to really stand for uh, what we all believe in, that the world should have very few borders left. And that is why when I am in this kind of arena, when I am in this forum, when I am in the embrace of this foundation, I really feel like I have to be super honest and really say it like it is. Okay, we're very, very lucky to be in this country. This country is one of the most wonderful places to really shine and to really accomplish the goals that we set for ourselves. But this country is really lucky to have you because you bring in, yeah, give yourself a big clap. It's the opportunity. We know that this country is founded on this kind of diversity, but it's an opportunity to learn from other cultures, and especially at this time, in this day and age, learning from other cultures, especially from de developing countries, is extremely important, not only in the world of science, of course, but especially in the world of design. And I want to really praise this foundation for giving so much importance to architecture and design. Architecture and design 
are maybe part of the arts, but you know, when people try to compare design and art, I always say, who cares? I shrug and I move away. Because design does not aspire to be art. Art is not higher than design. Design and art take each other's hand and work together and walk together just to make uh, the world a better place. And when I say design, I also consider architecture a branch of design. Don't tell my colleagues. Um, but it's really important to take design into account because design is a force that shapes our world. And it's a force that also takes into account the economies that are necessary today, the kind of respect that we owe the environment, a sense of uh, responsibility that we owe other people and objects and resources. And I have to say that there's nothing more inspiring than the three plus one, the four winners of tonight's prize. They're very diverse, but they bring their culture with them. You know, we're going to start with Yasaman Hashemian, who comes from Iran and who went on from her native country. You know, she moved here with her parents during the revolution. And she went on to make a case for video games to be a force for good progress. She is at USC right now in Los Angeles, and she's been working on several video games that are truly educational, amongst them one that is about obesity that really tries to teach people to eat well. She's also been publishing uh, pu several articles that show how video games are not necessarily attached to uh, higher inc an increased incidence of atten attention deficit disorder. In other words, she's really trying to move our understanding of new technologies and of new means of education one step forward by using art and great design in the process. And it's that, that's particularly dear to me because MoMA has started acquiring video games lately and we've been crucified a little bit by some old-fashioned uh, art critics that think that you cannot put Pac-Man next to Picasso even though there's like five floors of distance. But no matter what, this kind of sensitivity is what we really need. And that brings me to talk about Masur Urasana who has started out in Togo a long time ago. His parents left Togo as refugees and then studied at Umea, which is a wonderful school in Finland, and now is based in Chicago. But he made a big name for himself about one year and a half ago with this beautiful uh, home appliance called Lepsis, which is a little kind of uh, indoor garden to breed grasshoppers to then eat them. It's very interesting because entomophagy is a normalcy in many countries of the world, but it's still considered something pretty disgusting here. I've had a chance to eat insects, and I actually liked very much, especially fried bees were delicious. And, um, but to, make, to be serious, we know that eating insects is a perfectly viable way of garnering proteins, and that it's going to be more and more important in the future when we will be more conscious about the methane-inducing price of, uh, um, of raising cattle. I mean, there's a long story. You can go and really read the science about it. But it's really interesting to see how bringing new habits from different countries, old habits elsewhere, new habits here, by means of making that them normal, by introducing them uh, with good design, is really sensitive and important. Kilia Riano grew up in Florida, and uh, his parents are from Colombia. And his particular knowledge comes from a sense of politics, a sense of the fact that every architectural act, every design act, is an act of politics. That's a very old-fashioned and kind of Euro European way of thinking about politics. Anything that is beyond the nucleus of the family is a way of interacting with other people. So Kilian sees architecture as a form of activism, as a form of political stance, and he always puts you know, his money where his mouth is, or however you say it here. I always make mistakes with these proverbs. But it's really been an amazing kind of work that he has produced along the years. One thing that I love about this prize and about this foundation is that it brings together art and science without any intermediary membranes. It's a short circuit that is as powerful as anything. And that leads me to talk about the winner of the Vilcek Prize for tonight, that is Neri Oxman. Neri is very dear to me. We've known each other for a really long time. I was struck by her work the first time I ever saw it because 
she really brings together nature and artifice, mathematics and art, a sensitivity for the world and a knowledge of the future that is almost stunning in her work that is ever-changing. She doesn't have a style ever. She just has a curiosity and an approach that is always awe-inspiring. When I met her, I was preparing an exhibition called Design and the Elastic Mind. It was, the exhibition was in 2008, so probably I met her in 2007. And it was an exhibition about art and design and science. And I was exploring this new territory that I knew nothing about. Every time I looked at something, I had to start from scratch using my sensibility as a design curator, but having to build an instruction or an education or a literacy in science. And Neri was doing this beautiful work. She was doing material ecology at that time. She was building a library of natural behaviors that were distilled from, say, the bark of a tree or the incidence of the sun on petals of flowers. And she was trying to extract from that algorithms that could then go to become a library of natural behaviors applicable by anybody who wanted to do, say, a facade treatment for a home in a northern climate. Her work was fantastic, if at all incomprehensible. And I remember that at that time I told her, you're doing fabulous work, you just need now to learn how to explain it. And it was beautiful because the website was really impossible to understand. But ever since, um, Neri did one thing after the other that um, always changing. Her, one of her latest works, now she's at the Media Lab, she's a professor there. And with her students and her collaborators, she did this marvelous silk pavilion. And since you're scientists, you'll understand what I'm talking about. We've been trying for centuries to get closer to nature. We've been trying for centuries to learn how nature does it, because nature does does it best. It builds best and it destroys best. Uh, Neri has found a way to incorporate nature in the process of building by transforming silkworms into 3D printers. With her students, she studied the behavior of silkworms, she transformed that into mathematical algorithms, and she plotted a scaffold that renders silkworms 3D printers and construction workers at the same time. I really recommend you go and see it on a website because it's so hard to express it here, but it's breathtakingly beautiful and sustainable and a vision of what the future can be. The funniest thing is that when we were you know, deliberating as a jury, we did not realize that Neri's husband, Osvaldo Golikov, actually got this prize for the arts a few years ago. It was, I mean, of course I know Osvaldo, but we had no clue whatsoever. So I think it's the first time in the history of the Vilcek Prize that two spouses get the award. Well, congratulations, you know, quite a family. Yes. It's quite amazing to recognize all of these immigrants, emigres. There was an exhibition in Paris in 2008 at the Fondation Cartier called uh, Native Land that really struck me. It was curated by Paul Virilio, you know, the theoretician, architectural uh, critic, and it was based on the idea that humanity today is defined by migrations, by big movements of people and then also consequently of money that really create an energy that is sometimes tragic and some, but always, always disruptive. And there was a beautiful visualization that was actually done by um, a team that also included the architects Diller Scofidio and Ben Rubin and Laura Kurgan that showed this energy almost as if it were palp palpable. It's a cultural fusion that really generates the energy that makes the world go round, and we're here tonight to celebrate this energy. I would like right now to give the word to Rick Kinsel, who's going to introduce all of the winners of tonight. Thank you very much. <laughs> 